Hey guys, Eddie here with a TV series you've probably never seen. During the 1970s, no one would deny that Doctor Who was the pinnacle of British science fiction on television. The show, which had been on the air since 1963, experienced a golden age during the eras of John Pertwee and Tom Baker. However, it wasn't the only sci-fi show on the BBC at the time. While the TARDIS has continued its travels through time and space for over five decades now, its contemporary has largely flown under the radar. I'm speaking, of course, of Blake Seven. The show ran for four series, from 1978 to 1981, and was created by Terry Nation. Nation was, of course, well known to Doctor Who fans, as the writer of classic stories such as The Keys of Marinus. Oh, and also as the creator of the Daleks. Terry Nation famously pitched Blake Seven to the BBC as the Dirty Dozen in Space. In actual fact, the show took inspiration from a number of different sources, including The Dirty Dozen, The Legend of Robin Hood, and even Star Trek the Original Series. Space. The final frontier, as it was once called. There are several notable parallels with Trek. For example, both shows took place in the 23rd century, or in the case of Blake Seven, the 3rd century of the second calendar, and explore societies ruled by a galactic federation. However, the similarities mostly end there. Both Blake Seven and Doctor Who being produced by the BBC around the same time meant they shared a number of production elements, including cast, costumes, and even sets. The show's theme was even written by frequent Doctor Who composer Dudley Simpson. Much like Doctor Who, Blake Seven didn't always have the budget to support its ideas. The show's creators quickly learned not to overreach themselves. Instead, there was a strong focus on character. The show's title refers to its seven lead characters, in particular the group's leader, Rog Blake. Though the roster changed several times throughout the four series, the central group was almost always comprised of seven characters. Seven of us can run the ship properly. Six, surely. You forgot Zen. You're not counting that machine as a member of the crew. Whoa, what do you say to that, Zen? Please state course and speed. Very diplomatic. Ironically, Blake himself only appeared regularly in the show's first two series. In fact, only one character appeared in all 52 episodes of the show. The show was filled with complex characters, their various interpersonal relationships were truly fascinating. I'm going down. You can't do that, Callie. They are in trouble. Someone must go down. I'll go. Gan will go. And Villa will go with me, won't you, Villa? Will I? Well, it'd be stupid to go on my own. You wouldn't want to send Callie in your place, would you? Probably not. What about you? What about me? Why don't you go? You are expendable. And you're not? No, I'm not. I'm not expendable. I'm not stupid. And I'm not going. The incredibly well-written and well-performed dialogue was often laced with subtlety and double meaning. Blake, in the unlikely event that we survive this, yes. I'm finished. Staying with you requires a degree of stupidity of which I no longer feel capable. Now you're just being modest. This allowed for a lot of witty humour. I hope you can trust him. I told you, he's a friend of mine. Yes, I always knew you had a friend. I used to say to people, I bet Avon's got a friend somewhere in the galaxy. And you were right. That must be a novel experience for you. The characters didn't always say exactly what they were thinking or feeling, but they were developed so well and the performances were so strong that you could always understand what was going on. The show's so-called good guys weren't always that heroic. Those that were often paid a heavy price. Where are all the good guys? You could be looking at them. What a very depressing thought. Questions of morality and the ends justifying the means were raised on several occasions. As the show continued, its characters became increasingly desperate. The fourth series in particular took them to some very dark places. Villa! Well, that's plastic, it weighs nothing. Get rid of it anyway. A kilo and a half, if we're lucky. Do it! We've got five minutes! Not enough, not nearly enough. Damn it, what weighs 70 kilos? Villa weighs 73 kilos, Eva. Ask anyone who has seen the series who their favourite character is, and I can all but guarantee they will answer Avon. His true motivations were always the hardest to pick. You're never involved, are you, Avon? You ever cared for anyone? Except yourself. I have never understood why it should be necessary to become irrational in order to prove that you care. Or indeed, why it should be necessary to prove it at all. 
actor Paul Darrow felt the character was being written inconsistently, and so he started playing him as slowly losing his mind to compensate. Ironically, this ambiguity was a large part of what made the character so popular. The point is that Villa won't trust you, whereas he will trust Callie and me. Well, Callie, yes, but why you? Because he knows what I think of him. You despise him. Right, but at least I'm consistent about it. In addition to its somewhat amoral heroes, the show also featured a number of memorable villains, including Blake's nemesis, Travis. However, none were more threatening than Servalan. The character was originally written as a man, however, after noting that he had a problem writing women, Terry Nation intentionally changed the character's gender. Originally conceived as a one-off threat, the character proved so popular she eventually became the hero's primary antagonist. Her outfits were initially somewhat subdued and monotone, However, as the show progressed, they quickly became increasingly elaborate. The writers, costume designers, and of course Jacqueline Pierce's brilliant performance created a threateningly powerful female villain without robbing her of her femininity. It's completely blocked. There's no way through. Brilliant. They'll dig us out eventually. Oh, yes. They'll dig us out eventually. And then I'll bury you. Like many sci-fi greats, the ships became additional characters. Blake Seven had both the Liberator and later Scorpio. Their respective onboard computers were literally treated as characters in their own right. Zen, take us into orbit as close as possible to the planet's surface. As close as possible, Zen, the orbit could decay in 48 hours. Confirmed. The parameters were anticipated. <laughs> I get the distinct feeling I offended Zen's professional pride then. It's just a machine, Blake. The show had an interesting relationship with artificial intelligence. It's superstitious halfwits like you who hold back every advance we make. And arrogance, Avon, like yours and Buller's, which threaten to destroy. Shut up! Yes! Master! The three primary computer characters were all voiced by Peter Tuddenham. However, they each had distinctive personalities. A formal application was laid before the High Council on Earth within the last 30 days. I can get you the exact oh, data. I don't wish to interrupt, Master. Then kindly don't. I wasn't talking to you. You were attempting to override a superior system. Be silent. Blake Seven was known for its mature tone and themes. Have you murdered your way to the wall of an underground room? It's an old wall, Avon. It waits. I hope you don't die before you reach it. The writers weren't afraid to kill off major characters. Despite its various limitations, the show was in many ways surprisingly modern. There are two classic ways of dealing with an hysterical woman. You didn't really expect me to kiss her, did you? Of course you know what this is about, don't you? It's simple female jealousy. Oh, terrific! If two men don't like each other, that's a rational judgement. If it's two women, what else could it be but jealousy? Each series consisted of a brisk 13 episodes. The show included ongoing storylines and character arcs, and also made use of series-ending cliffhangers. Avon, this is stupid! When did that ever stop us? Fire! A trend that would become more widely popular in subsequent decades. Mr. Worf. Fire. The Series 2 finale, Star One, featured an alien invasion from the Andromeda Galaxy. Interestingly, the original idea was to have the invaders be the Daleks. The stars of both Blake Seven and Doctor Who wanted a crossover between the two shows. However, this idea was eventually abandoned. Despite my immense love for both shows, I think it was the right decision to keep them separate. The show was expected to end after the third series. However, BBC One controller Bill Cotton was so impressed by the quality of the show, he had the continuity announced to reveal it would return, during the closing credits of the Series 3 finale, Terminal. The show's cast and crew found out while watching the episode's initial broadcast. Without spoiling anything, the Series 4 finale, Blake, was an incredibly bold ending to the show. In 2006, B7 Productions released Blake 7 The Audio Adventures, a reimagining of the show broadcast on BBC Radio 7. This was a full reboot with a new cast and original scripts. 
Since 2012, Big Finish Productions have also produced a number of Blake 7 audio dramas, set during the original show and featuring surviving members of the cast, much like their various Doctor Who ranges. Talk of a live-action revival has been circulating since the show ended in 1981. However, none of these rumours have ever amounted to anything. Regardless of whether or not the show does one day return, we will always have the original. Those of you paying attention will have noticed that 2018 actually marks the show's 40th anniversary. Given its relatively unknown status, the occasion didn't receive much fanfare. However, all four series were re-released in a stylish DVD box set available through Amazon. You can access this via the link below, and as always, if you do, you'll be helping out the channel. If you have seen the show or do decide to check it out, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Maybe share it with a friend. Or an enemy. Either way, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications to see more content here on Channel 73.